All right, hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, that was a fun one to film and to edit. So now I'm just gonna quickly go over the tackle, uh, my rod and reel setup, the bait, and the way I rigged. And I'm a beginner at sturgeon fishing still. That was my third trip out. So I'm just gonna give tips on what I did to be successful on my first trips out there because that one I caught about 15 sturgeon. Time before it was like five. So just kind of go over what I do and kind of help people who are first starting out. So to beginner from a beginner. And first I'm going to go over what's in this box. So let's get started. All right, so first we are going to go over terminal tackle. That is including weights, beads, hooks, all that good stuff. Uh, first I'm going to go over the weights I used. So the weights I like to use are between a two and a four ounce sinker weight. I prefer the cannonball weights like this guy right here. This is a four ounce cannonball, boom, focus. I like this one and then the only two ounce weight I have is this little teardrop weight right here. But uh, the amount of weight depends on where I was in the current condition. So if I was more out in the open part of the channel, I'd be using this four ounce and if I was pushed up against like um, the dry docks or the ships, I would use a lighter weight because there's less current up in there. You can use lighter, but I prefer in between these two weights. Um, the only other ones I have in here are big eight ounce ones. Here's a little the five and some eight ounces. I don't use the bigger ones like that because the current over there isn't too strong. All right, now we will get on the hooks. The next piece of tackle I'll be going over is the hooks. It is illegal to use anything other than barbless hooks for sturgeon. And so the two hook sizes that I prefer to use and I've been using lately is a five aught and a seven aught size hook, which are these two guys right here, five aught, seven aught. I prefer to use the seven when I'm running a little bigger bait. So like a seven to eight inch herring or um, like a cut piece of shad or something. And then the five aught I've been using for um, like my squid, um, anchovies, and then the like five to six inch or smaller uh, herring that I've been using. All right, so the last few pieces of tackle I'm gonna go over before I get on to the setup and the line that I use are swivels, weight sliders, and beads. The swivels I use are KVD Mustad swivels. They are size six. 65 pound breaking strength swivels. They are beefy. They are a good swivel for these bigger fish when you have tension on your main line and your leader. It's good to have a nice strong piece of metal in between those. And then we have these Eagle Claw weight sliders. These just give me kind of peace of mind when I have my big bigger ounce weights on my main line sliding back and forth. It makes me feel like it's gonna reduce the tension, or not the tension, but the friction on the line and kind of fray it after a while. So um, it's also nice just to have something to clip your weight on and off real quick instead of having to retie and slide that weight on and then retie to the swivel. And then um, I don't know what size beads these are. These are just some little beads I picked up at Cabela's. I put them on either side of my slider and it protects the knot and yeah. So basically that's the terminal tackle I use and um, I'll go and show how I make the whole setup and how it looks and everything else I run. All right, so now that I went over the terminal tackle aspect, I'm going to go over my run and reel setup the rod I have been using lately is the um, it's a Shimano TDR. It's a trolling rod. 
a 8 foot long rod with its medium heavy and a medium fast action tip so um, it's got a decent sensitivity for some of those more subtle bites and it's got a nice backbone to keep those fish pinned when using the barbless hook and just kind of muscle in some of those bigger ones so um, can load up a lot of weight and it's just a good beefy rod for handling some of the bigger fish and the reel I've been using is the Daiwa Sea Line. I picked this combo up at like a local tackle shop last year and I prefer the open face reel. I haven't tried a spinning setup yet. I will to see how it performs against one of these casting rods. But yeah, that is the rod and reel that I've been using. So now I'm gonna show you my setup what uh, line weights I use and just how I rig my baits and everything for fishing. So let's get to that. That'll be the last part of this how-to section of this video. Now I'm going to show you the simple bottom rig sturgeon setup that I use to fish. It's a very simple setup. That bead keeps rolling over here. Um, so I'm starting fresh with my, it's hard to see, but it's my main line right here is 30 pounds suffix braid. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of forms are going to uh, recommend using 80 to 100 pound test braid for your main line, which makes sense because especially starting out new and not knowing the strength of these fish, uh, you kind of have peace of mind using a higher rated line. So if you want to go 100 or more, that's not a bad idea, but I have been using this 30 pound test since December because it was what was already on my reel and I haven't broken off yet. It's worked really well. So you can get away with lighter line, but if you want a little more peace of mind or if you get into a really big one, it'd be a little nicer to have your main line a little stronger than 30 pound test. But that's what I've been running and that's what I'm gonna be using for this demonstration. So starting out with the main line, I'm going to slide my first bead on. Get that on there. Then we're gonna take one of the Eagle Claw uh, weight sliders. I'm gonna slide that in there. Then we're gonna slide our second bead on. This bead is to help protect your knot from when the weight slides around and bumps into the swivel. You don't want to bust that knot up. And then, speaking of swivels, taking the KVD 65 pound swivel that I talked about earlier. And for this demonstration, I'm going to do an improved clinch knot, which is usually what I fish with, but I'll do a double palomar because braid can slip, but whatever your preferred knot is. All right, you got your knot on the swivel. I'm gonna use my braid cutter to get that tag on. That's the main line set up, and now I'm gonna get to pretty much the last piece, which is your hook and leader. So this is the leader I use. This is by Brad's Fishing. This is a Brad's uh, pre-tied sturgeon leader. Comes in like a five pack of pre-tied leaders, which is nice. Um, you can always just like, where is it? Buy a pack of hooks like this and just a spool of Dacron line, which is what this line is. This is Dacron, I believe it's called, and just tie your own. Um, this is the knot that they prefer. It's a little egg loop knot. So um, these are really handy though. It's like five bucks for a pack of five. This is the five out hook. And it's 80 pound Dacron. It's about a 30 inch leader, which is about the leader length that you'd want. And I usually tie just a improved clinch with this because the swivel eye is too small to double feed that line through to do a power knot. 
So if you have swivel with a little bigger eye, you can. I'd recommend doing the Palmer knot because that's a strong, strong knot. All right, once you got that tied, you are pretty much done with your setup. All right, there's the setup. You got the 30 pound braid main line. You got your first bead, weight, weight slider, second bead, barrel swivel tied to 80 pound Dacron leading up to your five to seven on hook. All right, so now I'm gonna get into the smelly part of this, which is showing how to rig up your bait, which is herring, which I have today that I have been defrosting. So let's get into that. All right, so I'm gonna show how to rig up a seven to eight inch herring, these guys right here. I like the bigger herring, but I prefer using the like five to six inch herring. I had like a 30 pack of those and went through it in one day, they sucked them down. So um, these still work really well. This is gonna really stink. Um, there's a lot of different baits to use. There's squid, uh, sand shrimp, shad, probably chicken, just kind of any stinky bottom or any stinky bait that you can fish on the bottom. So like some stuff that you would use for catfish maybe, like you could probably even use worms, but I haven't really experiment, experimented that much. So um, I did say I usually use a seven knot hook when rigging the bigger herring, but since for the demonstration I used a five knot hook, we're gonna be using that. That is stinky. All right. Damn, that is funky. Your bait right there is a nice stinky herring. So I'm gonna be using a rig that uses half hitches, which will keep your hook in line with pretty much the lateral line of the fish is what I try to do and just kind of keep it nice and straight so they come suck it up. So, your hook, let's get a little zoomed in a little bit more. I don't want to screw this part up because it stinks. All right, so you're going to take your hook and go start behind the gill plate. Pop it in right behind the gill plate, and you want to bring it out pretty much right. So, yeah, behind the gill plate and have it come out about right behind the eye. And I like to shove the rest of that knot just in there a little bit. Just a little bit. So then you're going to take your half hitches, which is just like a little twist of the line. I don't know a good way to really explain this because I still don't know that well how to do it. In my first half hitch I like to put over the shank of the hook, so I'm going to tighten that down. So just kind of over the shank of the hook like that. I'm going to do my other half hitch, bring it up over that guy, about a couple inches below your first one. There's the other one. I do about three. And the last one at the base of the tail. There we go. So you got three half hitches. First one I go over the shank of the hook, second one a couple inches below it, and then the third one right at the base of the tail. So that's gonna sit on the bottom like that. It's a nice, keeps the hook in line with the lateral line, and it's just a nice little presentation that sits on the bottom and gets sucked up pretty easily. Whew. So that, is my best way of explaining how to rig a herring and pretty much any other bait that's the pretty much the technique for the anchovies smaller herring squid whatnot kind of use that you can use magic thread and stuff to kind of help keep things in place but yeah that's basically it for that 
I'm gonna go wash my hands. Uh, I hope this helped anyone wanting to know how to fish for sturgeon or what the setup and rod and reel and all that stuff look like. Um, there might have been some things I left out. If there was any questions that I didn't answer, please let me know in the comments or whatever. Uh, I'm still learning on how to teach people how to fish and especially something that I'm not super experienced at. But I thought it was simple enough to kind of pass on from like beginner aspect. I explained how to uh, rig that the best I could. Um, that's how I do it and it's worked. I've pulled a decent amount of fish out. Uh, don't worry about the hook being too exposed or having too visible lines. The kind of whiskered looking feelers to feel around on the bottom because their mouths are on the underside so they aren't line shy and they aren't hook shy. So you can have a big hook like this sticking about that far out of your bait and they will still pick it up. Um, <clears throat> just last few tips before I end this video. Uh, bite wise, they will sit and kind of gum your bait for a while, so suck it up, spit it out, kind of move it around in their mouth so they can take it in whole. Um, so it will be little tiny bites, kind of like a, like a small panfish nibble, like when bluegill kind of peck it, your worm or whatever you're using. So don't set the hook on those bites necessarily, kind of wait for more of a tug. It's just like what I learned with catfishing, they'll tap at it a little bit, but until your rod actually loads up, um, they aren't in the area of getting a clean hook set. So that's just something I've learned. Keep pressure on them while you're reeling in because you are using a barbless hook so it can slip. So when you go to gain some ground, be sure you keep that pressure on them. I forgot to mention that if you do fish an organ, um, anything that flows into the Columbia, if you're using if you're fishing for a fish that is under um, like special regulations, so like steelhead, salmon, halibut, and sturgeon, you need a Columbia endorsement tag. So don't forget that because they will pin you for those. So you have to have your tags, fishing license, and Columbia endorsement to fish for sturgeon. So it gets a little expensive, but it's worth it. Anyway, uh, please subscribe. I really want to grow this channel into something awesome because... So far, it's been a lot of fun, and I want to continue making videos. Uh, like if I helped you out, comment, like I said, any questions that you need. And besides that, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you watch me catch some sturgeon on my kayak, click right here for the last week's video. If you want to watch my other sturgeon video, click right here. If you want to subscribe, click right there. Thanks.